Hey y'all, Rick here. It's been a while since we've done a Star Trek Legacy video, so I thought we'd jump back in with a pseudo-relevant vessel, the namesakes of the USS Odyssey. Now this had one cannon iteration, and several soft cannon iterations, as well as a myriad of real-world vessels that share the name. The name's origin is from the Latin word Odyssey, and the name of the protagonist of Homer's works, Odysseus, or Ulysses. The story was the tale of the Greek king who took ten years to return home after the fall of Troy, and along the way encountered all sorts of perils and mythical adventures. The word has since come to mean such as an epic journey, whether that is a physical one or otherwise, and therefore seems the likely title for many a ship. So let's get started with a look at the earliest Odyssey I could find, which actually only dates back to the Second World War, during which there was an HMS Odyssey that was actually the name of an accounting base in Ilfracombe, then London, where it maintained documentation, record keeping, and cipher works. Many of these so called stone frigates operations are apparently still classified to this day, so that kind of puts an end to that. If we look at the name Ulysses, however, we have a bit more luck. I'm including this as a similar namesake as they technically share a naming origin, but I won't treat them as such for the fictional Star Trek vessels. In the late 18th century, there was a Roebuck class frigate of the Royal Navy that operated in the Caribbean waters and was dismasted on 1781 during a storm. She was decommissioned in 1815. In 1913, there was a destroyer launched under the name HMS Ulysses, however it was rechristened the Lysander. In 1914, there was the SS Ulysses, a transport ship that ended its service sometime in 1929, while there was the HMS Ulysses of 1917 to 1918. There was also the HMS Ulysses R69. She was a destroyer, commissioned in 1943 and scrapped in 1970 after being decommissioned in 1963. She took part in the invasion of Normandy and was refit in 1955 to become a Type 15 anti-submarine frigate. There are several civilian ships bearing the name and several variations, such as the Royal Odyssey and the World Odyssey. These tend to be passenger liners and the like, and are too numerous to really mention. It's also the name of the Odyssey Marine Exploration Organisation that salvages deep sea wrecks. Moving into Star Trek. Well, to me, the name Odyssey is one of those like Discovery or Explorer, a name that seems to be an obvious choice for Starfleet. But the first one that we see is the ill fated Galaxy class starship sent to reinforce and rescue Commander Benjamin Sisko. Its captain was Declan Keo, and the vessel was launched in 2364 under his command. The USS Odyssey, NCC 71832, was the fourth Galaxy class vessel to be commissioned. According to extra content, this would have been Captain Picard's next command after the Stargazer had the appointed commander of the USS Enterprise not passed up the flagship. From what can be gathered, the USS Odyssey engaged in typically Galaxy class missions, from preventing non corporeal entities from destroying the galaxy to helping establish Bajoran farms in the Bajor sector. Most of her operations seem to be along the Cardassian border deep in the Alpha Quadrant, a kind of mirror to the USS Yamato and the USS Enterprise, similar vessels which mainly operated close to the Beta Quadrant sides of Federation space. They were on patrol along the Cardassian demilitarized zone when they were tasked with their final operation in 2370. The rescue was successful, but during the retreat the ship was rammed by a Jem'Hadar fighter, destroying the ship and all aboard. A standard Galaxy class could house over a thousand crew members. This was seen by many as the beginnings of the Dominion War. There are references to a Galaxy Dreadnought style ship called the Odyssey, but I doubt this was an actual ship as in 2375 a new Intrepid class starship was commissioned with the name USS Odyssey NCC 74650. Records of this vessel's tenure are not clear, 
but by the end of the 24th century, plans had begun to commission a new class of explorer that would surpass the sovereign, so I doubt it was still in service at this time. Matters are complicated somewhat by the Star Trek Picard prequel comics, but I'll do my best to fold in all the sources. The Odyssey class was first seen in 2381, and the USS Verity, NCC 97000, seemingly the first of its class. However, the designation of Odyssey class remains constant, and the NCC registry, as opposed to the customary NX, suggests that this may in fact be the prototype, merely renamed when it was fully commissioned. The vessel was an explorer at heart, but its immense size made the USS Verity suitable for use as Admiral Picard's vessel from which he could command the Romulan relocation efforts. This mission was undertaken until its cancellation in late 2385, when Starfleet recalled all assets in preparation to defend itself after an attack on Utopia Planitia. However, in 2409, the Odyssey class was overhauled and had a rear hangar added that would accommodate an Aquarius class escort vessel, as well as saucer separation abilities. This was in response to the Klingon Defence Force's own new Bortus class flagship, and it beefed up the starship's capabilities in combat. The Aquarius class is a small raider style vessel that is sort of a lightweight defiant style combat ship and it has been deployed as its own ship and not just an Odyssey attachment. The naming conventions for this may date back to the launch of Apollo 13. The command module's callsign was Odyssey, while the lunar landing module was Aquarius. Another unique feature of this starship is its bridge design, which features a multi-leveled design and a lower observation port that doubles as a sort of situation room. The USS Odyssey itself remains in operation in 2410, defending Earth space dock, while the class of the starship went on to become the basis for the USS Enterprise NCC-1701F. Captain Vakel Shon, an Andorian, took command of the vessel and is the first of his species to command the Federation's flagship. This ship became the new poster vessel for the Federation, and there were many variations and specialities of this design, some with both the Aquarius class hangar and with greater scientific implements, such as the Yorktown variant that the Enterprise was refit to, and the Verity. In real life, the vessel was created in a competition to design a new Enterprise, so it seems fitting that in some way Picard managed to command one of this line. I expected there to be more ships named the Odyssey in both real life and Trek and was surprised by the lack of information I could dig up. Ulysses is a far more common name and date back to a far older time, but although originating from the same place, it's not quite the same. Ulysses is a name while an Odyssey has become a word for a great journey. There doesn't seem to be a conveyed theme to the vessels of this name but I do like the NASA references for the Star Trek Online design. You could also look at the destruction of the USS Odyssey by the Dominion as a foretelling of the dark times ahead for Starfleet, with a ship named for exploration and journeying being destroyed, symbolic of the change in priorities Starfleet was about to undertake. Thanks for listening to this legacy video, documenting as much as I could find on ships named the Odyssey and some Ulysses. There's a lot of memory beta content here, otherwise the video would have ended with only one mention, and that didn't end well. Leave a suggestion for another ship name for me to look at, and let me know if you know of any other Odyssey vessels that I couldn't find. Well, thanks again, I've been Rick and I'll see you next time for another lore, gameplay or discussion video. Goodbye.